Hi Aries, welcome back to the Warrior's Journey Tarot. Today we're going to do your love reading for April 24th to the 30th. I'm using the Joie de Vivre Tarot by Paulina Cassidy. I just opened it up for Taurus, uh, their reading that I did just before you guys. I'm going to pull eight cards from here. I'll tell you the significance of the placements as I go. Then I'll pull some Love Oracle cards and one Spirit card. So this is for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for April 24th to the 30th, please. And Love and Romance. All right. We got a card that flipped out. Sorry, Taurus. I'm saying Aries. I'm so sorry, Aries. Knight of Cups, an offer of love. Two of Swords, undecided. Okay, so this is for Aries. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for April 24th to the 30th. As you can see, the images are kind of different, but I like it for springtime, and it, this deck is amazing. It really does work well. I bought it a couple years ago. I gave the deck away when I was on a trip to Thailand to somebody I met on the trip. And then I just repurchased it recently. I've been meaning to for a long time, so I finally did. It arrived yesterday, and here we are. Fresh start, clean slate, the full card. Knight of Cups, there it is again. A new beginning. Somebody is going to offer love, some kind of message, a phone call, something. There's that message being relayed. So that came out twice, that Knight of Cups. All right, Aries, what's going on for you in love and romance? A little bit more, and then I'll cut the deck. For Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, for April 24th to the 30th in love and romance. By the way, you guys know it's Mars in Cancer starting soon, in the next few days. Power. Mars is power in Cancer, which is the home, motherling, motherly, motherly kind of energy, mothering. So I feel like it's just going to give you power and energy in the home. And if anybody should try to kind of test your authority, then yeah, that Aries fire might come out. But otherwise, I feel like it's going to be a great time of taking care of home and family. Cooking good, eating well, taking care of your family and feeling proud of your achievements. All right. So anyways, back to your reading. For Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for April 24th to the 30th. All right. Let's cut the deck. What is in store for Aries? This first card is you, Aries. Nine of coins. Lovely. Look at that. This is your love interest, six of coins. The situation between you two, four of coins. A lot of coins here. Outcome, five of swords, not good. How you see them, nine of wands. How they see you, ten of coins. Your challenge or obstacle is the page of wands. Their challenge or obstacle is the ten of swords. Okay, and the Empress is on the bottom for the underlying energy. So when the Empress is on the bottom, that means that this is some kind of new love, new romance that's being given birth to, some new relationship here. And the Empress comes up also for Taurus energy. Doesn't have to be. It's got Venus energy. It could be some Libra energy in there as well, but... Aside from all that, it, it can also speak to pregnancies. So be careful if it's going to end up in five swords. Okay? The, the Empress is about beauty, love, generosity, earth energy, fertility, creation, creativity, abundance, all fantastic things. But the problem that I can see right off the bat here, Aries, is that you're doing great, but the person you're dealing with is dependent. I don't know if they're dependent on you or they're dependent on somebody else, but you have a card of nine of coins. You see how she's just flying there. I think the description said that she's on a falcon, but this looks like a regular bird. I don't know. It doesn't look like a falcon, whatever. Point is, she's sailing through life. Nine of coins is the card of independence enjoying that you can do for yourself being single it's a single person's energy whether you're male or female and it's showing being able to do for yourself being 
having achieved financial stability and independence. Um, for the person that you're dealing with, they don't have that energy. They have six of coins. It could come up when you have, you're giving to somebody else. You might have children who are dependent on you or that you're dependent on your parents or you're dependent on other people or maybe they're dependent on you. Whatever the case may be, the six of coins is giving, receiving, reciprocity, mutually beneficial relationship, both parties benefiting, one person having more perhaps and the other person being on the receiving, one person giving. Point is, it's not independent though, like the nine of coins. Okay, the six of coins, sometimes it comes up if you're doing you know, charity work or philanthropic kind of things. If it's not, it could be about, you know, donating money to charity or it could be about having people dependent on you or you being dependent. Now, the situation between you two is four of coins. I feel like this must be you, Aries. Okay, because the four of coins, you see how lovely they've made this character in the four of coins? How nicely her hair is done and how, you know, she's got these spider legs here and it looks like, you know, the four of coins has stability and financial stability at that, right? But it also shows this kind of energy of greed um, or miserliness of yourself, not being open or receptive to others, um, not being willing to open up emotionally. You might feel like you don't trust this person. You feel like, what do they want from you? You might be suspicious, holding on to your coins tightly because you don't trust people, right? Maybe because you are financially stable, you feel like there might be a little bit of suspicious kind of intentions, okay? You might be suspicious about their intentions. You don't trust them. Also, it could be when you're in a relationship and you still keep an eye out and you're looking at other people's lusty energy as well, okay? That kind of greed energy. In love and romance, it could be like wanting more than what you have, being kind of like, um, lusty in that way and, and a little bit of a cheating energy. Now in the outcome, there's five of swords. Five of swords is disgrace, ruin, defeat, scandal. Um, no apologies being accepted. No forgiveness. Bullying, cruelty, abuse of power, winning at all costs, all that type of stuff. So this is what is here at the outcome. Not good. How you see them is nine of wands. Now, how you see them is that this nine of wands energy, you see there's their heart, they're open, there's an eye there. Here they have one eye, they've got a patch on the other. Nine of wands is called the wounded warrior card. It means that you've been hurt before and so you've got a guard, your guard up, a whole wall that they've built around. They feel almost like they're threatened okay um where they're vigilantly guarding like anything could they, they just don't want to go back to that feeling ever again of opening themselves up and then getting hurt like that and so they have their guard up okay this is not having recovered not having healed this is how you see them blocking okay how they see you is this ten of coins you're nine of coins so they say see you you know they're not even looking at just you. They're looking at your family money, okay? Because nine of coins is independence, your own independence, your own finances being stable and solid. I hate seeing a lot of coins in love readings because to me, it's like you shouldn't be looking for somebody, really, ideally, you shouldn't be looking for somebody who's just the main thing is that they're going to offer you financial stability, right? I know that that might be what it is for most people or a lot of people, but I think that's gross. Um, 10 of coins here is showing that they are seeing you as 10 of coins. They see you not only for what you've done for yourself and how much you've achieved, but also they're looking at your background, your family, last name. That's that legacy lineage and all inheritance and stuff that comes up with the 10 of coins, a big committed energy as well. So this is like where you see marriage or um, grandkids and the dog and, you know, abundance for future generations to come, a legacy, let's say, right? 
So they see you in that way. They could either see you as committing and marriage and settle down, or they could see you as they're looking at your finances, how well to do you are and your family is. The challenge or obstacle here for you, Aries, is the page of wands. The page of wands, it, it, it's somebody who's very interested and passionate about things and they it's a youthful energy, so it's not very grounded. It's not focused. It's kind of like pursuing your new interests all the time. You want to go here and travel there. Then you want to take up this and then you want to do that and follow that. And then it's kind of like, you know, not having a lot of strings and being able to pursue all these different things that you like. That's why there's the page energy. It's youthful. Whereas the king of wands would be, you know, having a project that they manifest from beginning to end. The page of wands is somebody who's trying new things to see what they would even want to manifest later on down the road. This is your challenge or obstacle. It's kind of like you've got ADD. That's what I'm thinking right now. Okay. This popped up to came to mind. Your interests are all over the place. So it, your challenge or obstacle is to, uh, kind of anchor yourself down, tie yourself down. Now, how, what's their challenge or obstacle It's the 10 of swords. They've gone through something traumatic. Nine of Wands, you see them as the Wounded Warrior, but this is their challenge, is the Ten of Swords. They went through some painful, toxic ending, a toxic cycle that was hard, really hard. Whatever trauma they went through, whatever hardship they went through, it, this is their challenge or obstacle. It can't get any worse than this. It's only going to get better, but they're in a very low energetic place. That's their challenge or obstacle. Okay, it is painful, cruel, horrible betrayal or injustice or cruelty or whatever you want to call it the ten of swords is like painful energy that they, they that has come to its conclusion now and they need to heal from they haven't healed though you see them as the wounded warrior they have their guard up all right so let's pull some love oracle cards this is amira's love oracle can we get a card for aries sun moon rising and venus for april 24th to the 30th please this is for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, please. In Love and Romance for April 24th to the 30th. What does Aries need to know for April 24th to the 30th in Love and Romance? What does Aries need to know? Whoa. Okay. On the bottom, we have Fair Male, but these popped out, so when they pop out, I haven't been taking the bottom card. So we have, well, open relationship, ice king, dark male. Okay, so these cards, there's not much of a description to these cards, except, you know, maybe open relationship might have a bit. These are literally describing the type of person. So as you can see, this is a very lover type energy. I don't know if you're dealing with someone like this or if this is you, Aries. Ice King is showing that it could be either that you're interested in someone who's older or um, the type who is like an Ice King, which is that air sign, King of Swords type energy, a professional, wise, um, a teacher, authority figure, a leader, someone of this type, Ice King, okay? But they're not somebody who is overly emotional or gets swayed by their emotions. They're logical, they're fair, professional, quick-witted, smart, intelli intelligent, all those things, logical. And then you've got, with this Ice King energy, you've got Dark Male. This, extremely, this Dark Male is supposed to be someone who's extremely hot-blooded, passionate type. Now, these two can be the same person even though this looks like such a passionate person, it's showing at the end of the day, just like that page of wands energy, following your passions, but not being able to be tied down. Okay, so that's an ice king energy. And there's open relationship here. Let me read open relationship. It's just opened right there not a serious relationship and the person in question wants to be free to date others 
or you want to be free to date others, not ready to commit, freedom of choice. You may not be serious about this person and want to be free. Does that say it all or what? So that's that page of wands, as I was saying, right? You are single, nine of coins. That energy for you is independent, financially stable and all that. You can't tie Aries down, not for this Aries. That's what it looks like. Let me pull um, a spiritual card, okay? This is the Work Your Light Oracle cards by Rebecca Campbell. It's a very high energy light worker deck. So I want to get one card for a spirit card reading for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for April 24th to the 30th, please. Is there anything Aries needs to know? What spiritual guidance is there for Aries for April 24th to the 30th? What does Aries need to know for April 24th to the 30th, please? Thank you so much. I love this deck. All right, this is for Aries. Almost. Could I please get a card for Aries? Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for April 24th to the 30th. Remember what I was saying, even with the Four of Coins, the situation between you two is like, you could be in a relationship and you still have that lusty energy. Being greedy in that way. Having a roaming eye. And that ends up with Five of Swords. An abuse of power, cruelty, disgrace, ruin, scandal. Um, winning at all costs type of thing. Forgiveness not being granted. All right. For Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for April 24th to the 30th. Please, what does Aries need to know? All right. Align your life. What is no longer in alignment with who you truly are? Just going to take a peek on the bottom. Break the chain. Ancestral patterns, healing, rewriting the future. This card, I know, I just got it for Taurus. It's quick. I'll tell you, it's about saying that uh, seven generations is how long trauma from your past uh, ancestors' lives affects your life where there's patterns that you don't even know why you're repeating them, but it's just something that you're just so used to that you do. It's saying that in the end, you can heal yourself and then maybe that will make the other people who are toxic in your home life Maybe they'll want to change and heal themselves once the energy is freed up and you've done that for yourself. But you can't heal them and you can't fix them. But speaking to breaking that kind of uh, energetic chain. So align your life. This is not in alphabetical order, but there it is, 34. So it says, what's no longer in alignment with who you truly are? What in your life is no longer in alignment with who you truly are? We are psych cyclic beings in a constant state of change, of evolution, of growth. Change is one of the only certainties of life. When you resist your cyclic nature, you resist life and feel stuck. Many of us have learned to be who the world wants us to be. But there comes a time when it is harder to hold on to this facade than it is to embrace who we truly are to surrender to how we have changed and align life to that way of being. If you pull this card, you're being called to let go of who you once were or the things that you once defined yourself by, the job, the relationship, and the mask you wore, and to embrace who you truly are now, to courageously step into the person that you came here to be in full authenticity, to embrace your weirdness and your uniqueness, Perhaps you have outgrown some relationships or circumstances and it is time to reassess and bring all the parts of your life into alignment so that they are congruent with who you truly are today. Work Your Light inquiry is, what in your life is no longer in alignment with who you truly are? And I think that is your relationship pretty much. And it could be speaking to family patterns and, uh, what is it? Ancestral patterns and feeling chained to those kind of, um, cyclic patterns. 
right? That's that you don't even know why you're repeating it. It's not healthy. It's not good for you. So that's your reading, Aries, for the 24th to the 30th. No big deal. It's only a week. I'll have your May readings out right after I finish these readings, and I'll talk to you guys very soon. Hope you enjoyed the reading. Thank you for watching, and bye for now.